and it does. So this is a, a, an example of a perfectly good use of a URL to resolve to all the information about that particular type specimen for a, a rodent that lives in Argentina that's in that collection. So as long as this URL continues to exist and give me this, it's a globally unique persistent identifier and it's great. It does something useful. I had a second example from the same system that takes me to a digital object. I don't need to go there unless you absolutely need to see a pretty picture of a seal. But it's the same idea, it does the same thing. So just in the last slide I was discussing how vulnerable a URL is. If I have a web server and I turn it off, my URL is no longer resolvable. A Perl or persistent uniform resource locator tries to make the guarantee of persistence a little bit better. And it does so by dedicating its services at Perl.org to resolving URLs that no longer go directly where they used to go. So how does that work? I create arctos.database.museum and I have a web server and it's supposed to when you go there and give it the URL that I gave in the last example give a web page about this mammal. Now if arctos.database.museum goes away I can't get that page. If I register that URL at pearl.org then at pearl.org, I can maintain a registry of where that URL is supposed to go. I can change where it is supposed to go. It's still unique on the web, but pearl.org can redirect it for me. So I can turn my database server off because I created a new database server for, for in some other institution and I'm going to point all of my URLs over there. I don't have to change my URLs in my database. Those are globally unique persistent identifiers. I should never change those. So instead, what I'll do is change where they go. And Perl.org allows me to do that using a persistent uniform resource locator or Perl. So the examples are these. Th they all begin with uh, HTTP colon slash slash Perl.org and are followed by something, the rest of the address. Now I have no idea what this one resolves to but if I go there I should be able to see. It should resolve to something. And it does. Now notice Okay, we have plenty of specimen information. That's interesting. It has gone to a web page. It has an occurrence ID, a global unique identifier looking like Darwin Core here. And that your occurrence ID is the one that I entered in the web browser. This whole string is exactly the same one. But if you look at what the web browser did, it's not the same. It's actually somewhere else on the web. It has gone through the GBIF Norway resolver to this location. That's where the thing actually is now, even though the original URL that I put in is that one. So I've been able to redirect. I can move my resources around and keep my identifiers intact. That's the beauty of the Perl system. Now, on this slide, there was another important thing. Okay. I'll go through them all. There's a uniqueness guarantee. It's probably resolvable on the web. If it was re resolvable to begin with when you made it, and you keep it up to date when you change locations, then it is resolvable still. If you forget to change where to point the URL, then it's no longer resolvable. So you still have a responsibility. The persistence is better guaranteed than just with a URL for reasons I described. You can generate them yourself. This whole part right here is up to you. 
The only part that's not up to you is this one. That's your contract with Perl.org to resolve this thing. So the generation of the, the identifier is still under your control, and it does use a resolver. Now, if that part is under your control, then you have the freedom to construct URLs using any of the other identifier systems. And I think what I'll show you now is a clever way to use a combination to try to gain the, um, the advantages of several different systems. Okay, so in the very first slide I said that I promised to tell you how do you create some of these things, and this one is easy. If you go to Google and put UUID generator in the search box and do a search, you'll find that there are innumerable tools. Every one of these, except that one, is a generator. If you go to that site and say, give me a UUID, or give me a thousand UUIDs, it will do so. So you don't have to have software on your own machine to generate these. There is a way to do it from websites. And they're all using the same algorithms. It doesn't really matter which one you use. So if we are able to generate UUIDs, then there's really no excuse for us not to have global unique identifiers in our databases. And we can use those UUIDs and attach them to a Perl to resolve them. So we have a URL constructed with a UUID and we get the good characteristics of both identifiers. So what we really want are globally unique, persistent, resolvable identifiers. Is it clear what I meant by each of these categories now? If there's any doubt, let me know. Okay. So why? I've told you all about them and their characteristics. What good are they really? Okay, fine. My digital record is globally unique. What does that allow me to do? Well, here is a list of a few of the things that one is capable of doing if you use globally persistent, resolvable, unique identifiers. One is to get feedback about your data. You start to put your data out there on the web, there will be people seeing it. And a known fact of having people see your data is that they will find things that are wrong, potentially. And if you would like to have the world working for you, for free, you give them a way to tell you about the things that are wrong. That is a feedback mechanism. So if I attach a globally unique identifier to my record, and I put that into a system that allows feedback, then it feedback system knows where to send the feedback because it has a globally persistent unique identifier. And it will do that for the rest of time. So it gives you a way to engage the world to tell you when there's a problem with your data. That's a benefit. It's a benefit of sharing data. And it was one of the biggest surprises when our collections went online for the first time. It made the difference before and after of the following. Before we had our databases online, the curators spent most of their time answering emails about data, to deliver data. So they would get a question, give me please all the records from Ghana in your bird collection. And they would go to their database and they would spend time doing the query, they would put the data together, and they would send it back to the user. When the data went online, the curator didn't have to do that anymore. The user could do that. They could go to a web page and do a query and find out that information for themselves. The impact of that was that instead of serving over a year's time something like 200,000 records to people asking for information, they started serving 19 million records in the first year. 200,000 to 19 million, which means their data are being seen much, much more. In the meantime, the curator is not answering those emails anymore. They don't have to. 
So what are they going to do with all this time? They're bored, right? They have nothing else to do. Right, Town? Because they don't want to do research. That's hard. Instead, what that allowed them to do, and what the impact was, all those people, all those 19 million views of their data records revealed the problems in their data, and those researchers wrote back to the curators and said, hey, wait a minute, this can't be right. That species doesn't occur there. So now the curator is getting information from experts around the world for free to improve their own data. So instead of spending all their time giving data, giving data, they're getting information to improve their data. So they've made a big impact on the work that they do. Their work is now being much more useful inside their own collection based on this engagement with feedback with the rest of the world. So it's definitely a benefit. Provenance has to do with knowing where the data came from. If we put our data out there in the world, a lot of the concern is, okay, now what use is my museum? All the data are out there, and the data are the important thing. 